Hey guys, it's Anthony Pichabona here back with another market update. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week. We're going to talk about where we think the market's going in this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. And make sure you stay all the way to the end because I'm going to just show you some warning signs of why it's not a good reason to be going long here, at least on ES and NASDAQ for a pullback. We can continue bullish on NASDAQ. It's been very bullish on the market structure. But I want to show you some warning signs of why it, you should be cautious for, if you're looking to go long. At least wait for, for this pullback that's that's coming. Make sure you sit back, relax. i got a lot of things to show you, a lot of reasons why we're going to see this pullback. I have been wrong in the past two weeks. If you look at my videos but, but about a month back now, I started shorting a ES. And I was average short was about 41.40. And I got in some ads about 42.20. Average short now is 41.50. And I kept saying that we're going to be selling off about 200 points by the end of May. You know, all we got was a 100 point sell off and then rallied back up to the highs. And, you know, we're near the end of May now. And we didn't get that 200 point sell off. We only got a 100 point sell off. So I've been wrong up to this point, And I think it's just been dragged on. And they're really extending this before it does get this snap back down to about 4,000 on ES. Uh, I think we're really going to get down to those low 4,000 levels uh, in the next coming weeks. I know I've been extending these targets, but um, it's just basically what I'm seeing. So I'll show you the reasons why I think we're going to go there. If you didn't see yet, they came to a debt ceiling agreement uh, Saturday, Saturday night. And I back tested it basically the day of the agreement when that market opens. There's a nice uh, gap up. And um, basically, I think, you know, on ES, we're going to gap up, stop myself out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow myself to be stopped out of half of my short. Uh, I think we'll open above there Monday. Monday's a holiday, but futures still trade. So I think, I think I'll be stopped out on half my position. If you just look at price action, purely price action is bullish. Why? Because we made this low here Friday, May 4th. It's a swing low, and we've been making higher swing lows, and we're pushing up. It looks bullish. NASDAQ, extremely bull bullish. It looks very bullish. I have some targets here that I, that I have listed. I'm looking for a 50% retracement to, to 13,150 by June 24th. And I'm looking for a, at least the 38% retracement to 13,450, which is about this area where this alert is set. I think we'll get down to that level uh, in about two, three weeks. Reason number one here is HYG. HYG is smart money flow. It's high yield corporate bonds. And it's been going hand in hand with the S&P 500 the past two years. However, in 2021, HYG diverged and stayed diverged from S&P 500 for six months. But every other time recently, it's marked tops when we had severe divergences and it's kind of snapped back to the orange line. Orange line being HYG, the green bars and the red bars being S&P 500, SPX. This is on the weekly chart. And as you can see back to the all time high right here, once we diverged, we fell to meet HYG on S&P 500. We had to snap back in two, three weeks. You'll see the high here at the end of March. Boom, snap back to the orange line because they got too far. Why HYG was going lower while S&P 500 was making highs. Same thing happened at the August high. HYG was selling off after a couple weeks. Red bars came, met the orange line. Every single time here, you see these, these down arrows. You can go and back test it yourself. Except for right now, this is the longest divergence except for that 2021 period where we were printing money and um, they stayed hand in hand. So... Based on this correlation, it basically implies 389 on SPY by June 9th, and it implies 39.10 ES by June 9th. Now, I think that the diver divergence is getting weaker. That's why I wrote this right here. I don't believe it. I trust a weaker sell-off, meaning that the, the correlation is weakening. So maybe next time we have a rally, I shouldn't be looking at HYG at all because it could completely disconnect. It's possible. It's happened in the past. But based on history, it's likely we have, we'll, pull, we'll have the snapback. But the snapback just might be not as clean all the way to this orange line as previous times. This is reason number one. This is a big reason. Next one is the put to call ratio. So when the put to call ratio goes extremely low, meaning there's very low puts and there's a lot of calls. Once there's an extreme low, it typically marks a top and it, there's a reversal. Not every single time. So I'll show you one example here. There was a low here about uh, mid-April. And there was a sell-off the next two days, but then we made a higher high, and then we had a bigger sell-off in the next coming days. Another example is with DJT, Dow Transports. I talked about this in previous videos, a down theory crash signal. Da uh, the DJT has been trending down as SPX is making new highs. After a top is found, it basically sells off and meets the orange line. It's happened all throughout the past couple of years. But again, the, di di the divergences can go on very long time. So... Who knows how much longer this continues, but they do snap back to reality. This one implies, again, SPX falling down to about 3,900 in the next coming few weeks. 
But again, maybe it becomes a weaker correlation and it doesn't fall that far. But again, it's just, it's, it's a caution sign of, of where it, there's a high likelihood of a snapback. Uh, the dollar breakout has marked every single top in the past few years. And this is where these green arrows are. You'll see that as soon as the, bo the dollar bottomed and it had a big rise, that marked the top and we had a fall as the dollar continues to rally. Here, we have a very long divergence where the, the dollar bottomed uh, about a month and a half ago and had a big spike, but we still went for higher highs on SPX. Typically when that happens, it doesn't last very long. And again, this one implies about 5% sell-off in the high, 4,000 SPX by June 8th or 399 SPY by June 8th. You can go ahead and back test this uh, the past few years as well. You'll see that as the dollar bottoms and rises aggressively, it typically marks tops on the S&P 500 and then we have sharp reversals. Another reason pointed to a sell-off is the VIX divergence. Basically, we're having higher lows on the VIX while we have higher highs on S&P 500. Each time this happens, this is on the weekly chart, each time this happens, one, two, or three times, it typically marks a, a sharp reversal. It just means like volatility is increasing as we are making new highs. Typically, volatility and SP 500 are inverse. So if we make new highs, then the VIX should be making new lows. So if volatility increases while SP 500 goes up and makes new highs, it's a caution signal that we're about to have a sharp reversal. You can see back at the all-time high here, we made a low on the VIX, we made a high on SP500, we made a higher high on SP500, we made a higher low on the VIX, and then boom, sharp reversal. Right now, we have the same thing, we made a high on SP500, then we made a low on the VIX, we made a higher high on SP500, and a higher low on the VIX, indicating a sharp reversal in the next coming weeks. This is the NYA and SPX divergence. Now, I don't use any indicators, all I do is look at price action, and I can make correlations with price action if I think that we're due for a reversal. Usually I just look at market structure and just trade the market structure, but when I see these extreme divergences that have been playing out for a really long time, I can't help I personally am too hesitant to go on the long side, so I have to be personally looking for shorts. It's just the way I'm looking at it in terms of risk reward. When, when you have these extreme divergences, it's just very hard for me to, to choose to go long on ES when I see these things that have been playing out for so long. So the first divergence, uh, if you didn't know, NYA is the NYSE composite. It's the entire stock market. So basically all we're doing is correlating S&P 500 with the entire stock market. So the entire stock market is making lower highs while S&P 500 is making higher highs. And every time this divergence has played out, it's marked the top. In Just in this past uh, two years, you'll see that we had nine weeks of a divergence before top and sell off right here and there. And then 13 weeks from the top here, we made a higher high on S&P 500, lower high on NYA and then there was a sharp sell-off. Right now we have 17 weeks where we made a top in NYA. There was a top at S&P 500. We've now made a higher high in S&P 500 and a much lower low on NYA. And it's been 17 weeks, so it's been a long time. The last time this one also played out was before the 2008 crash and the 2000 bubble. So, you know, it's been very rare when these kind of signals happen where the entire stock market is much lower than the S&P 500 where it's making new highs, but the rest of the stocks are just really shitting, the, really selling off and not making new highs. So we're due for a, a reversal in the next coming weeks, but again, it can be played out. We can make another high before we turn over. I'm just showing you all the reasons why I've been holding my short and why I have high conviction in this short. Next divergence is SPY and RSP. RSP is the equal weight of S&P 500. So it means like if all the stocks were, were weighted the same, then where would we be? And basically you can see we've just been trending down since January. We've had a 17 weeks of a, of a divergence and I didn't find any other time that had this divergence from 2004 to 2003, except for the 2007 top before the 60% crash in 2008. So if we've been making consistently higher highs on S&P 500, but the equal weight is in making consistently lower lows, after the top, we get a very big reversal. But again, these things can just be stretched for so long, so it can stop us out before actually rolling over. So just wanted to point attention to that. Another reason why it's just too hard for me personally to take the long side when I see all these things. Here was the comparison in 2007. Basically, we saw 14 weeks of a divergence where we made a lower high on RSP, but we made a higher high in 2007 on SP 500, and then from there we just sold off, and there was a four, there was an eight percent sell off in the next four weeks. So you know that would imply us being about 3,900 at some point by the end of June. Here's what that divergence looks like on the weekly chart. If we make SP 500 a line, is the blue line, and we make the equal weight of SP 500 an orange line. 
you can see they go hand in hand, hand in hand. Equal weight started to roll over. That's when we had the start of the sell-off at the end of 2022. And it's been playing out all normal, except for now. We made a high here, and then we've just been going a lot lower on equal weight, and we've been going higher in SP 500. So a lot of caution there, a lot of reason to be cautious, and it's just tough to go long at this point. And here's QQQ with the QQQE divergence. Same idea, QQQ being the NASDAQ, and then QQE being the equal weight. Same idea as S&P 500. Every time these get, these two things get very far apart, there is kind of a snapback that happens. So you'll see I have these red arrows every time. You can see you're very far from each other, very far from each other, very far from each other, very far from each other. Right here, we started to get far from each other, but we are very far from each other now. So the one difference, though, I will say is that breadth has been increasing at least for QQQ, where S&P 500 breadth has still been decreasing. So that's a very, very weak sign for S&P 500. But QQQ, at least it's increasing, right? So this just means that QQQ could have a correction, but S&P 500 could sell off a lot more because of the extreme weakness. One last divergence I want to show you is BKX. BKX is the banking index. This is partially the reason by such poor breadth for S&P 500, because a lot of bank stocks are in the S&P 500. Basically, you can see that the banks have just been going down a ton while S&P 500 has still been rising. That's something that, that caused that, that kind of sounds the alarms for weakness because last time this happened also in 2007 where the banks were really selling off while S&P 500 was holding up for a bit. And then S&P 500 tended to roll over later on. It's just another comparison. Something I wanted to show you that, you know, bank stocks are extremely weak while S&P 500 is making new highs. It's some, it's just an alarm bell for weakness. So what I'm expecting is that we'll have a gap up because of the positive news on the debt ceiling agreement. I think we'll have a gap up, maybe come to 4240 up to 4260. I'm going to let myself get stomped out half my position at 4230. And then once we start to roll over and I get confirmation of a rollover, I'll add the other half back in. I just need to manage risk because who knows how long this divergence can go before eventually rolling over. It's already gone, honestly, to new records based on what I've back tested. So divergences can go on for too long. So that's why it's best to stick with price action and just follow price action. And when price action invalidates you, it's invalidated. So I'm just gonna be cutting half position. I'm holding. I'm gonna be holding a half size, like I said, and then looking for us to roll over about midweek this week. I'm basically looking for something like this, where we have a spike up Monday, Tuesday, and then Tuesday we get a reversal, Wednesday at the latest we get a reversal, we start coming down and we start sweeping these recent lows here, getting down to this 4020 area at some point in the next two weeks. So this is basically what I expect on ES. In terms of NASDAQ, NASDAQ we get this one last push here, maybe for that 14,500, stop everyone else. And then at some point by mid-June, mid-June we get down to the 13,450 area and then I'll reassess from there. but. Basically is what I'm looking at for NASDAQ. NASDAQ's been going parabolic. It's been extremely strong. NASDAQ was the weakest last year in the bear market. So it makes sense why we're having this extreme strength now to make up for it. Um, but then possibly more selling down to the low 13,000 area at some point by the end of June. But then honestly, after this low, I, I'm not super bearish. I just thought that we were overextended and we're going to sell off. After this low, we could push up again into the July and August and, and start targeting 15,000 at some point by the end of summer. So definitely could see something like that at the NASDAQ. Same thing with ES. ES, I think that after we do get this pullback, I think we'll be targeting about 4,300 at some point in, in August. So we'll have something, you know, this very sharp reversal back up and basically get to up to about 4,300 at some point in August. That's basically what I'm looking at. I think that this will cause the most pain coming up here. Rug pulling everyone, st taking all the stops out, and then sharp, sharp reversal back up. That's going to conclude today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below of the divergences I've showed with all of the charts. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, what you want to see more of, give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. I really appreciate all your support. And I'll see you in the next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning.